pretty overcast today. It's starting to look a lot like we're gonna get some rain. That's all right. I have the perfect vlog in mind to go do right now. Days with Jordan the Lion and the Joster begins now. Well gang, thanks for coming back and watching once again today. My 600 and I don't know how many th <laughs> daily vlog. Well today, we're gonna go take a look at an office building. Now, this is actually a place that I've been to a million times. I've auditioned here a ton of times because this is like one of the main casting directors in town for commercials is based out of this office. Now, <laughs> considering that I've been going there for three or four years, it was definitely a surprise when we were out doing our um, our tour with Scott Michaels and Dearly Departed when Adam the Woo, Jacob the Carpetbagger and I all went out and took that tour together. Then we drove by, he told me the story behind that building and I said, oh man, I, I gotta vlog this. So taking what he had told me, doing a little further investigating, I found out the story gets even better. So today we're gonna head down to Beverly Boulevard and I'm gonna show you an office building that was once owned by <laughs> Liberace. taking this guy for a bit of a walk and then we're gonna head out. Now what's interesting about what we're gonna see today is that this office building, if you saw the movie Behind the Candelabra from a couple of years ago starring Michael Douglas and Matt Damon, this is one of the only, actually this was the only property that Liberace owned that was actually in the movie. Oh, well, that's a nice house, isn't it? Now when this movie came out, I never had any intention of ever seeing it. It just wasn't, I don't know, it just didn't strike me as something that would be of my interest until two of my favorite comedians, who I never thought would like the movie, did bits on this and actually said in their bits, this is a phenomenal movie. It should have won the Oscar. It should have won an Emmy. And, and I think it actually did win an Emmy. But it's the story of Liberace's six and a half year affair or relationship with a man named Scott Thorson who started out as just a friend and a, a vet tech that was helping him treat his dogs and then ended up becoming his lover, live-in boyfriend, uh, chauffeur on stage, and Liberace actually paid for this man to have his face reconstructed to look like a younger Liberace. I love this house with all the pink flamingos. Now I'm not 100% positive, but in the movie there's a part where Liberace gets a massive facelift and his manager at the time says, we'll buy you an apartment building, you can live there and nobody will know. I believe that this, what we're gonna see, was the building, the office building, apartment building that Liberace bought at that time. Now where what we're gonna see today really comes into play is during the breakup in the movie. Alrighty, we're getting close. Oh, what a nice house. What a nice little neighborhood here. Well, here it is. If you look close enough, you'll be able to see little accents of Liberace all over the building when we get a little bit closer. Now, they actually use this for the scene when Scott has blown up. Basically, what happens is his adopted mother has died. He tells Liberace that he's coming back to Los Angeles to go to the funeral. Liberace says, take as much time as you want. And when Scott returns, Back to Vegas, Liberace is with a new man, and Scott destroys the apartment, well, destroys the house in the movie, and then comes back to the penthouse here, the top floor, which I'm gonna tell you a great story about, and they film some of the scenes of Scott getting evicted from not only Liberace's life, but from this building right inside that doorway. So let's go take a look. So right here on the side of the building, if you look at these windows, you can see the gold accent that's definitely a Liberace addition, as well as pretty much the whole front of the building. Now right here, before you even walk in, you have a beautiful statue, very Liberace-esque. Now let's go in and I'll show you where they filmed the movie. Now you actually see it right here. Dan Aykroyd's standing at this elevator. Lee wants you to inform Mr. Scott Thorson his employment has been terminated and he must vacate the apartment immediately waiting for a couple of private investigators to come through here. Those are the guys who are gonna evict Scott from the premises. Mr. Schnelker, this is Scott Thorson's brother Wayne, half-brother. 
So they come through here and then they go up to the penthouse. Now what's interesting is the penthouse is still decorated in the fashion of Liberace. The pool and everything that you see in the movie when they go up there and Scott freaks out and they try and evict him, that was actually filmed here and that's the way it's decorated. Now when I was walking up here, I saw that there were people up there, so I'm gonna go up to that floor and see if maybe they'll be interested in showing me a little history. We'd like you to convince Scott to admit himself to a hospital for treatment at our expense. Yes, very Liberace. Scott? Scott? This is Tracy, the private investigator. Stay back! All right, well, here's the deal. I went up to the fifth floor and I showed you a little bit, but I asked them if it would be okay if I um, would go up there and film at some point. So they actually gave me a card and told me to email them and they'll see if uh, they'll run it by whoever's in charge up there. And if they can, then they'll we'll schedule a time and I'll come back. Now let me show you a little bit more of what was filmed here. All right, now let me show you the last scene that was filmed here. When Scott makes a deal with Liberace, they do their whole agreement through the lawyer. Scott comes to pick up his belongings right here. You see that building in the background and his car is parked right here. He walks out with the trash bags and everything and puts them in the back of the car right here. So right up there would have been the penthouse. That's what we were just at. You could see a little bit of the pool. And what they do in the movie is they come through basically the same way we did. Um, to find Scott and then Scott chases them out around the pool into another part of the pool which is located over right here. So maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get to uh, come in and show the filming location from that. Pretty cool to get to see that building that it hasn't been completely changed since he owned it in the 70s. And if we get in there, getting to see, uh, just from what I got to see, they definitely have it. Um, heavily marbled out in there, which would be pretty cool. And like I said, that was the only actual location from the movie Behind the Candelabra that actually was owned by Liberace. Everything else that was featured in the movie, the houses and everything, those were not his original houses. All right, well, I just stopped it on his own because my car's being an a-hole again. Replaced all the spark plugs to find out that there's oil in one of the spark plugs. So now we finally figured out what is going on with this stupid hunk of junk that I'm driving around. It feels like now it's a gasket. It's a leaking oil gasket. I am so sick to death of cars, I, could, I just want to push it off a cliff right now. But on the other hand, when I came home, I had this giant box waiting for me, and I'm 99% sure that is our green custom-made sunglasses. Why, it certainly is! Look at all that! Beautiful sunglasses! My name, Jaws name, sweet. And we also got another package from Amazon. Let's check it out. It's gift wrapped again. Well, it's not for me. Look who it's for. You lucked out today, fella. You're going to have more fun with the, uh, the bag, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. He will love this. He loves this Caesar stuff. All right, I'm going to try and get some of these mailed out today. Alright, well I just got back from a mechanic and had them replace my gasket, so gosh man. Basically all the changing the spark plugs that I did today, I I had went to AutoZone because my car was making more weird noise and whatever, so I went to use their reader, their code reader underneath my dash and it said that I was having um, basically like air in the, air in the um, fuel. And so I had, uh, the guy who read, read the test said, well, it might be your spark plugs. So I called my grandpa. I said, yeah, it might be your spark plugs. 
So I bought a wrench and I took apart my the top of my engine and replaced the spark plugs myself. And then when I got one removed, I noticed there was oil in there, which meant there was a cracked gasket or like a seal broken or something. So I finished the job and then I got a hold of a mechanic and asked them to do the gasket and to look at whether I had messed up anything with what I had done. He said, no, everything I did was fine. He checked all that stuff, said that was fine. Replaced the gasket and said to drive it around tomorrow and call him and let him know how it's going, like how it's driving, and we'll go from there. So there's, it's weird because every time we run a computer test on this thing, it says it's something different, but it's all from the same area. It all has to do with the same area. It just, every single time it tells us something different that needs replaced, I replace it and then we plug that thing back in and then it says it's something else, but it's always something to do with that part. So, so frustrating. I'm getting so tired of dealing with this. I want to be able to take Jaw out of town for a couple of days and this is killing me, man. You two got it made. You're lucky you don't have to deal with cars. What a headache, man. <sighs> well, good evening, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Wanted to send a shout out, thank you to Paul Edelstein and Bear Dog Pictures for becoming newest Patreons. And thank you to everyone who pre-ordered my sunglasses. If you'd like to get a pair, they have my name, Jaws name, and the Lionheart logo on there. Um, just go to paypal.me slash Jordan the Lion. Send $16 if you're in the US and please put your address in the notes and I'll send them out to you. Uh, while supplies last. I only have a few left, so thank you to all who ordered. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this vlog. Like I said, I um, when I first heard about Behind the Candelabra, I was like, I don't really want to see it because I had seen um, just enough performances on YouTube and stuff with Liberace that I always just kind of felt like on stage at least he was kind of fake. So I never really was that interested in finding out that much about him. And then when I heard other people talk about how great the movie was, and it had two actors that I think are great actors in it, I was like, okay, I'll watch it. It's a great movie! And it was kind of cool to get to see a building that Liberace once owned and lived in, and who knows, I'll send them that email and maybe we'll get to take a walk through and show everything from the filming location up there. That would be pretty awesome, so who knows? Who knows? Have a great night, everyone. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and good bye.